Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and guess what? I got another folio for you, but I can't stop, and you guys are telling me you can't either, so don't feel too bad. Today, we make an 8x8, eight eight, so let's get started. I'm going to use this Go Outside and Play paper. Now, you may not see this paper used in today's video much, because I really want to make the folio with you in this video, and you guys have told me that you kind of like when I do make the folio in one video and then decorate in another. And the reason for that is when you want to recreate, you just want to open up the let's build the folio video. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. Pretty much we're just going to build the folio in this video. All right, I'm using a different paper and I'm doing this on purpose. So many of you have told me, let me just, you know, annihilate it as I get it out. But some of you told me that you don't have the thicker paper. This one is a 65 pound. We do carry this in the store as well. So I thought I would try this to show you what it looks like. All right, so 12 by 12 paper. Now I told you this is not a paper saver, but honestly, once I put it together, it doesn't really waste that much paper. So here's your first scores, okay? You're gonna, sc you're gonna do some weird scoring. Just go with me on this one, okay? On your first set, I want you to score one and a half, then two, then 10, then 10 and a quarter. This is the only one that will be strange, but there's a reason for it. This side is, quarter, is a quarter of an inch thicker than this side on purpose, okay? Now I want you to turn it one time in your scoreboard, and this time you're gonna score it one and a half, two, 10, and 10 and a half. So again, the only place we do an unusual or a different one is that one right there, that quarter of an inch. And that quarter of an inch is gonna live on your right-hand side of your folio, okay? So, or at least that's how I'm doing it. You, As you know, you can mix these guys up. You know, you can turn them any way you want to, but I'm calling this the top, this my right side, this my left side. All right, now what do we need to do? We need to cut those pieces out. Let me show you again what they are. And I'll use this pen to kind of give you an idea. So we're gonna be cutting right here and when we cut, I'm gonna bring this to camera so you can see it. When we cut, I want you to cut out all your score lines in this square, okay? So you'll leave the score lines on the flaps, but we're gonna take them in the square. So let me show you what that means when I do that cut. So I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna cut that score line completely away. I do not need it. I don't want it hanging off of the flap or anything. So I'm just gonna cut that one completely away just like that. And you want to do that same process in all four corners. So let me do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so that's what it looks like cut. You can see our four corners are cut out and I've still got my quarter of an inch on this side. Before we fold this, let's go in and do some other cuts. Now I have three pieces of cardstock here, okay? And I'm using 12 by 12. You don't have to use 12 by 12. You could do this with eight and a half by 11 because the size we're gonna cut, but we need three pieces that are eight inches by eight inches. So this is the first four inches that I cut off. I'm gonna put that aside. I won't need it necessarily, but I might wanna use it in my album, in the folio itself. Now I'm gonna cut this down to eight and I wanna show you something we do wanna save. So this is my three pieces of eight by eight. And I also ended up with three pieces of four by eight. Now what I want to do is I want to hold one of those aside because I'm going to need it. The other two can go for scraps when I'm decorating inside the folio. Okay, now we need just two more pieces. And again, you could do these from eight and a half by 11. I'm going to do them from 12 by 12 so that my color matches. We need an eight by eight and a half piece two times. So two pieces, that's what I'm cutting here, two pieces, eight by eight and a half. This is why I told you, this is not so much of a paper saver project um, because you see I have a lot of these pieces left over. This doesn't bother me though because these make great photo mat edges or even I can use it in card making. These are not wasted scraps. So I'm not sad about that. I can put those into my bin and use them over and over again. All right, now what I need to do with these two pieces is go back to your scoreboard and we're gonna do a little scoring. So I'm gonna put this guy here and we're gonna take one and on the eight and a half inch side, See, I've got it on the eight and a half inch side. I want to score this at eight inches. That gives me that half inch so I can add it into the folio. So let's do this one also at eight inches. Now, if you would rather, you can turn this over and score it at half an inch. I just find it easier to score on this end than down here. So that's why I scored at eight inches. All right, let's do some folding and creasing on all these scored lines. 
here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your time on these lines. Do not rush this process. I find that the assembly of these folios, you're a lot happier if you spend some time on the assembly. So see how I'm making sure this is nice and square before I crease it down? That's what I want you to do. That will help you in the end. Plus, we're building something pretty specific in size. Like, it's hard for me to explain that, but like this eight inch piece is gonna fit in an eight inch spot. So it's really important if you can that you spend some time getting these good and square. All right, now let's go back to that first piece we scored. And again, we're just gonna fold and crease on every score line. So here's another example. Make sure this and this are square with those score lines that you have above them and below them, because if they're not, your whole folio can be a little wonky. Same here, take the time. See how wide that is versus this side? I just wanna make sure that I've got this nice and square before I go to creasing. Now, what might make our score lines be a little off? You might be asking, because you know, you're like, well, I did a score line, it should be straight. Typically, it's the, the distance of the score line or the gap of the score line. There's a lot of room in that, especially for me, because I score with this big ball tool or either I score with my um, Teflon bone folder. So I get a pretty big indention. That guy can score at the front, at the back, or the middle of that indention. I try to push the whole indention into the project. You can see how it's kind of chubby right here. If I push it, I'm getting that whole score line pushed in. So that's kind of what I mean by making sure we're squaring these guys up. You'll know what I'm talking about. When you're doing this in person, you'll be like, oh, that's what she meant. All right, so let's do this one. You can kind of feel it before you crease it. This paper's doing good. I wasn't sure. Um, but I like it. 65 pound and it, it, it creases really, really nice. That one feels a little thick on the end down there. Okay, so here's what you've got, all right? You have a top flap, a bottom flap. When you open this up, you have a half inch binder here or a half inch spine here and a quarter of an inch spine here. There's a reason, and you'll see as we do this next part. All right, let's go back to those pages we folded and our eight by eights that we cut. So we need to combine these and make them into one piece. So we're gonna make this be a 16 by eight inch piece, but it'll be folded at the eight inch mark. So here's how I saw that worked really well. If you lay this little guy down, I'm just flipping paper all over the place today. If you lay this little guy down and you apply your glue, this might be a good place for sticky tape. The only reason I would caution you on that is you might need a little bit of wiggle time. And here's what I like to do. I'm gonna lay this piece on top, but I'm gonna be able to kind of square it up by doing that. So see how I can check it here at the bottom and I can square it and I can square this side. That's what I wanna do. I wanna get that nice and flush together. Then I wanna crease it down smooth, smooth, smooth. So I'm gonna burnish it. Now I've probably got some leaking glue. And because of that, that means I wanna go ahead and open it up and check, not too bad in here, not too bad. And go ahead and burnish in here too. Now, you may find, I wanna show you this, you may find that you don't line up perfectly. Can you see down here at the bottom? I don't think you can even see that, there we go. See how I don't line up perfectly? That is normal. Between scoring, between cutting, and not everything being absolutely perfect, that's gonna happen. The only thing I wanna be sure I do is make sure we're square. So if I have to retrain the paper like this, that's fine, okay? And I'm gonna trim that off. I don't want it in my way. So going back to my trimmer, I'm gonna place this in just like this and then trim that little bit off. I'm gonna sink my blade and go up and down so I can get a nice crisp cut. See, now we're nice and even. So let's do that one more time with our other two pieces. Now let's do some assembly. Do you remember when I told you that I wanted you to cut an eight, an eight by eight and keep that top piece? This is going to be our top flap that's gonna close our folio down. So it's gonna go right here. So let's go ahead and put it on. The reason I wanna put these pieces on first is so you can keep up with top versus bottom. And I think if I go ahead and apply these, it'll help you. So when you're gluing this on, like all our other folios, Leave your spine where it is and glue to the right-hand side of that score line, okay? So I'm gonna take my piece and lay it onto that score line right past it. 
I do not want it to be overlapping it because I want nice free movement, okay? Don't want anything to be blocking it. And see here again, I'm gonna need to cut. Here's why. There was a score line there and there was a score line here. And when we cut them off, it leaves us a little bit. I know that sometimes you're like, why do I always have these pieces? Score lines typically leave us a little bit of gap, okay? So we will put this into the trimmer and we will cut it away. Again, I'll sink the blade and go in both directions and then I can get that nice and clean. You're probably gonna have to do that. Do not stress that. Just, just consider that part of the design process. Okay, so we've applied our top. That's our top piece there. Now I'm gonna apply this bottom so it all makes sense. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this guy onto the back like this. So I'm gonna flip it over. So when you see me turning and flipping, it's just cause I find it easier to flip it over to glue it down than try to do it with it, you know, facing up. So I'm gonna apply glue to the right hand side of my furthest out score line, leaving my spine intact and alone. And then we'll apply this piece. I'm probably gonna have to trim some off because of the score line situation. I guess we could call that um, a raw edge or extra hem that's left over or something like that. But you can see that's literally the width of my score lines that I have to take off. A lot of people wonder where that comes from. That's just it. And so what I'm gonna do is put it in the trimmer again, trim it away. Okay, so in order for it to make sense, I wanted you to see this. Top flap, bottom flap, okay? Now we're gonna work on these side flaps. We're doing the same thing. We're gonna take those pieces that we made earlier, these large fold out pages, okay? And we're gonna glue them in. Now I wanna glue it to the back again, all right? So I'm gonna flip this over. We're literally doing the same thing. You just have to remember which pieces get glued where. And you remember in the six by six when I said leave your open side here and your folded side to the right? Because we're gonna glue an open side right here. Very same gluing to the outside of your score mark place this whole piece to the outside of your score mark. We're gonna have to do that same trim again, no big deal. So lay that in there, get it attached. And I'm even gonna burnish this side just to be sure that we got it good. And I'll trim that in just a second. Let me show you this. If you get to a point where you can't get it in your trimmer, I think I still could, but I wanna show you this. You can always take your ruler and your um, craft knife and do this this way. Let me grab mine. I wanna give you guys a caution. We had a viewer email us this week and she said she had a really hard time with this guy. I think she ended up in the emergency room. So please, please pay attention to your blades. Make sure you always know where your blade is. Always keep your thumbs back on your ruler. And remember what I teach you, more passes, less pressure. And that way you're not fighting your ruler and your fingers and everything won't wiggle out of place. I did a lot of passes that time, a lot less pressure. All right, but I got it done. All right, let's do the other side. Okay, I've got this guy closed up because I don't need him to be open to do this. It's time to put our piece here, okay? Now, I'm not gonna flip this one over, but the reason is I want this um, page, this little fold out to live like this. I don't want it to be on the underneath of this guy, okay? You'll see why in just a second. So what I'm gonna do is glue this guy on just like I've been doing on the right hand side of that score mark and gluing the free edge of that guy down, not the fold, okay? Place it here, I will trim it, I'll do all of that and then we'll get back and I'll show you how it looks all folded up. Okay, so I'm gonna open it up, open the top, open this side and here's what happens. This quarter of an inch gusset or spine goes in first, okay? Then this guy, and I'm gonna turn this in, I'm gonna turn this inside like so. Then this guy goes in like this. That's why we have the two different sides, okay? I have the thicker one here, the thinner one here. That's so all bulk we build here can go into this quarter of an inch, and all bulk we build here can go into this quarter of an inch, okay? Now what's different about this one and the six by six we did, I'm not adding a flip out page here. 
You can, you can totally add a flip out page here if you want, but I'm not. And the reason I'm not is I'm afraid this is going to get a little heavy if I do that. And because this is our closure piece, it's going to have to stay in like this. If that gets heavy, it might not stay in the magnet well. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not, I'm going to decorate it. I'm going to decorate it with um, decorator paper and probably even photo mats and everything, but I'm not going to add another flip out just because I don't think this size of an album can handle that. That is the construction. Now, I want to round these corners because I just think it would look good. Also, you can have this open sideways. It can open like this. That is not a problem. You'll just open up and open down, or you can have it open down this way. I'm really not sure how I'm going to do it. I'm going to look at my paper and let my paper decide, but I do want to round these corners, and I'm going to round them with the half inch. So again, not sure if it's going this way or the other. Also, I want to say this. I use, I let my flap be this large because I wanted to use that whole piece and not cut another scrap. If you don't want your flap to be this large, you can totally change it. But I think you got a lot of decorating room here. And with the weight you're going to have inside of here, it might need something this big so that the magnet is over here and giving you a lot of stability. All right, that's the assembly. Now for this video, before we go into the decorating part, I am going to cover all of the pages and I'm going to use... Um, the photo, this photo play called Go Outside and Play to do all the covering. So I want to have that in this video because I want you to see this folio completely in its meaty self. Like I want you to see how it looks when it's covered before it's decorated. Okay, so for the flap, I have decided to use two of the large magnets. Here's why. Shannon recently did a folio class. Um, she's got another one coming too, by the way, but she recently did a folio class. And in her class, the folio she did called for two magnets on one kind of large like this. And I thought that was kind of smart. And a lot of you guys have been telling me that you've kind of been struggling um, with using just one magnet. You might want to use two as well. And you'll notice that I'm having to add adhesive to these. These are not my normal magnets. These are some I just had in my stash. I usually use the basic gray magnets, but we're out and I'm out. <laughs> so they're on their way in. Vince said we have an order coming uh, this week or first of next. By the time this video goes up, we may already have them in. So if you need to pick some up, but I love those basic gray magnets. So these, I just have to add my own adhesive, no big deal. All right, let's peel those backers and put this guy in place or put these guys in place, huh? All right, so we'll peel one of these away. Now here's the beauty of magnets. They're so easy to install because they really don't have to match anything except each other and they do that on their own. So here's what I mean. I wanna put them so that I have enough room to glue my paper down. So remember I told you this in the last folio, I wanna give myself about a finger width of space, okay, away from the edge. That way my paper will glue well. I think I'm gonna go something like, I moved up a little bit on that one, but I think that's where I want it. So I'm just gonna place that one there. Now I'm gonna place another one at the top similar. These won't show. They'll do their job regardless, and they won't show. That's what I love about them. So this is super easy. Magnets are easy to install. So we're just going to kind of mimic it somewhere about like that. And if it's not exact, it does not matter. All right, so then I'm going to peel this backer off, and this is where the fun part is. Now we're going to peel these backers off and then turn this flap over and let it catch. The thing I want you to be mindful of when you do this is squaring up your folio. Make sure when you put your magnet on, like you don't have this laid flat like that, because if you do, that's how your magnet will hold it in place. Do you see that? You don't want that. You want to square this up and square this up. See how nice and square we are before we put those down. And once we're square, those can go right where they are and we're good. All right, so now we should be able to lift this up and our magnet, oh, I didn't press that one enough. Let me close it back down, press it in place, and now we can open this up and our magnets are installed for us. Pretty cool, right? So easy, and now they're there. And I like the idea of two. Even though I don't know which way this one's gonna lay, I like the idea of two. All right, let's do some paper covering. What I'm gonna do for camera to save some time is I won't worry with the front because I know you're gonna wanna kinda see how I do that, but all these pages on the inside that are just seven and three-fourths by seven and three-fourths mats, I'm just gonna run through and cover all of those first. So we did have an issue. I don't have enough paper, cardstock, to cut 11 pieces at seven and three-fourths by seven and three-fourths. However, it gives me an opportunity to do something. So I love this little plaid, of course, you know me. And then I have this little guy. 
that um, was left over. It's a, it's a cut, it's a scrap, just as it is. And we're gonna turn it into a pocket and put it underneath that on a page. So it covers the page, but it also becomes a pocket. So let me show you where it's going. So we go back to this guy and we open it up here and here, and then we bring this out. This guy's gonna go right here. If you would rather have this on the very inside, which I think would be cute, just remember, leave that blank to put this in because I'm kind of decorating as I go. So I'm learning as I go. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna glue this down all the way to the top the whole thing. I'm not going to make this part a pocket, just the bottom part. And they're going to overlap, which is what I want. I need them to overlap because if they don't overlap, things could get kind of stuck in there. So I'm just going to let the scrap, um, I'll tell you what size the scrap is. I think it's four inches. It'll be a little more than that. So this, this guy's four and a quarter by seven and three fourths. So if you don't have to do this and you just need to know what size you need to do it, that's what you need. And you're gonna glue three sides. So we're gonna go down this side. This is gonna be a big pocket. Down the bottom. And then the other side, leaving the top open. No glue there, because that's gonna be where our pocket area lives. And then what I'm gonna do is place this down and then, you know me, I'm gonna give it a tiny pinch right here, like I'm just pushing toward. See, I've got that lift, you can see that shadow. That's what I want. I don't want to fight putting things in it, so I like that tiny little bit of lift in there, because that'll really help that out. Okay, so we ended up with a little pocket page. Super cool. All right, I'm gonna close everything up, and we're gonna work on the cover and this flap. Let's go ahead and cover the inside of this flap. So one of the kind of fortuitous things is these scrap pieces we have left over are the right height. They just need to be trimmed this way. And I need to measure this flap because I don't know how big it is, but I'll show you how this works. Because you know, it was just a scrap as well. So it's four, so I need to cut this three and three fourths by seven and three fourths. And remember, I need to round the corners. So here you'll see why I wanna make sure I have that space on the other side of those magnets. That is so, when I go to glue this guy down, I have enough room to seal them in. If you let your magnets be too close to the edge here, they won't quite, the paper will just kind of resist gluing down. This is, to me, the best way to do that. Make sure you get that down good. All right, the piece I want to put here is this plaid. I love this plaid. Okay, so because I have a top opening folio, I decided that when I put my papers in the inside. This guy is going to live like this. Either way wouldn't matter because it's plaid. And, you know, either way I put it in, I still could go, you know, left, right, top, bottom. Doesn't matter. But I get that guy in there. Okay. And then I'm going to flip this little guy over and put this piece on. And I think this will be so cute. Do you see this little piece that could be the top flap? I kind of think I want the green to be the first section up there. Let me do some trimming and see how this will work. Look how cute that is. So I cut off the top section, the red part, and then I cut this to three and three fourths and I just need to round the two corners. But isn't that gonna be cute? That, um, it's very, it just landed that way. It worked perfect. The way the title's like centered and everything, that is super cute. Now I will tell you, this 65 pound paper is not as sturdy yet as my linen paper. That linen paper is just so sturdy. This one's not quite there. But I will tell you where this one seems to be a little weak is not in the construction, which is good, not in this side, but in the middle because this is such a big piece, it's kind of sinking in the middle. That'll all go away when we add our photo mats or even if we just add photos because you'll be adding stability to these big pages when you glue, like for example, if you glue a photo here, you're adding stability. So anywhere it's a little weak in the middle, because even if you're using thicker paper, that can happen because this is a big folio. Don't worry, keep going. It will bulk up and it will get fuller. This one already has so much. It feels so much better already. Okay, that is the assembly. Now, it looks like you could even do your little half inch. A lot of you guys like to do half inch um, little strips of cardstock where you can and then a little quarter of an inch here. I don't know, I may do that, but for now, I wanna stop here. Like I said, you guys have told me you kinda like the assembly in one video and the decorating in a second. So Saturday, we'll have the video where I put in my photo mats and what little decorations and things and whatever I'm gonna add to the front. All right, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. You've been asking for them. Now, here's what's left on my list. I have a six, you want a holder for the six by six 
And I'm gonna guess you're gonna wanna hold her for the eight by eight. So we'll work on those for a future video after Saturday. Um, it'll lean into Christmas in July, but that's okay. We'll get it done. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate it so much when you do that. I have a really big goal. It's really an unreachable goal, but we might can do it. I set 400,000 as my goal for this year. You guys can, might, can probably make me do that by just clicking that red little button. Thank you so much for being here. And until next time, bye now. Thanks so much for watching today. Here's a couple more videos for you before you head out. And don't forget to click that red subscribe button. Thanks so much. Till next time. Bye now.